welcome to Tea Time, the only video game show that answers the questions no one cared enough to ask. This week's show is brought to you by Bombs, because MSNBC's Chris Hayes says they're safer than guns. Of course, keep talking and nobody explodes would be a lot less fun if you were cleaning rifles. But hey, speaking of virtual reality games, let's talk about, well, VR. Because with PlayStation VR coming out in just a few days, I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who still aren't convinced it's worth checking out. So... Now if this was a TED talk, you'd hear me go on about all the new horizons and fresh experiences that we could be having with virtual reality. But frankly, I think the best use of VR is just adding it to the games we already love. But before we can get into all that, we need to bring out my guest for this episode. So please welcome the creator of the Oculus Rift, Mr. Palmer Lucky. Oh, well, do we have a backup? Okay, cool. Please welcome the man who runs Valve, Gabe Newell. Welcome to the show, Gabe. You're quite a legend, so it's an honor to have you here. That's pretty exciting for me. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Now, as I said before, I think the best thing we can do with VR is add it into the game types we already have. Let's start with first-person shooters. When you can look around and aim freely, firing a gun just makes sense. VR also opens up the door for more gimmicks. The, the good kind of gimmicks. Take Farpoint on PlayStation VR. That game is best played with move controllers holstered into a gun model, like an NES zapper for the new age. Just that tactile nature of having the weapon in your hand adds so much to the immersion. Then you've got hover junkers on the HTC Vive. You may be able to look around and move a little bit with that headset, but you can't exactly move that far. But hover junkers has a simple fix for this problem. One hand fires weapons, the other steers your ship. Free movement and free aiming, just like that. So a super familiar genre like first person shooters gets totally revamped thanks to VR. Any thoughts on FPS games, Gabe? Counter-Strike was an experiment. I suppose it was. On to the next point. Let's talk about puzzle games. I briefly mentioned Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes already, and I personally think it belongs in this category. Sure, there are other bomb defusal games out there, but most of them rely only on puzzle solving skills. Keep Talking requires you to communicate your own observations of the bomb in your hands with the person looking at the manual, and together you solve the puzzle. It's a style of co-op we rarely ever see. Then you have games like Floor Plan, which at its core is just an old school point and click game. Find the item that pairs with the other item to give you another item and so on and so on. But because you're looking around in virtual reality and physically reaching out to pick up said item, one of the oldest genres in the book feels completely revolutionary through the headset. And that's really what I want you all to realize. These classic genres can feel totally new again just because of a new layer of interactivity. It gives us a whole bunch of data to go back. See, Gabe gets it. Now let's talk about that last category. I don't want to use the term simulator here, so let's just call these goof-off games. If you've played something like Surgeon Simulator, you know the type. Sure, you can accomplish the goal, but you'll have the most fun making a big mess instead. That's where games like Job Simulator shine. You're given a play space where you can make weird copies of objects or throw terrible ingredients into a skillet. Then you've got games like Rec Room, which presents you with a number of activities like paintball and beer pong and table tennis. A million different sandbox games have included some sort of clubhouse, but there's a significant difference when you're there in VR. Instead of twiddling a thumbstick, you are physically aiming your paintball gun. Instead of timing a button press to line up a shot, you're finding the real arc of your beer pong throw. Games like this take social spaces we're already used to, but makes them actually worth checking out. So those are just a few, few examples of where VR can take us from here. Uh, there's not really an end point. Exactly. We can have a million cinematic experiences, but you can only watch a cute little VR animation so many times. At some point, all we have to do is throw a fresh coat of paint on a tried and true game genre and make it feel totally new again. Anything you want to say before you go, Gabe? The Russian community is extraordinary. Well, I don't know what that has to do with anything we were discussing, but uh, hey, th thanks for being here. Give it up for Gabe, everybody. So that's my answer. The best thing we can do with VR is add it as a new layer onto the games we already know and love. And really, all you need to do that is a Samsung phone. 
But thank you all very much for watching. If you have some sort of question or obscure topic you'd like me to dive into, leave it in the comments below. I've actually based a few episodes off of comments now. Those are always a lot of fun to do. And if you want more videos and podcasts and articles and things like that, head on over to Laser Time. We do all sorts of fun stuff. Thank you again, and as always, let's go play some video games.